Right, so we're at Michael Falzoni's exhibition in Bath. Is this Black Talk Studio? Black Workshops. Black, that's right. And so we've got a really lovely exhibition here of, I don't know, how many works are there? About 20, 30? Um, yeah, about 20. Yeah. And um, you can see there's a, some smaller ones here and some really lovely series of large ones there. And uh, here's the artist, Michael. Hello, Michael. Morning. <laughs> Good morning. Nice fresh day today as well. That's right. <laughs> yeah, wiping the uh, snow. Is it snow or frost off the, oh, off the yeah. bonnet here? Yeah. yeah, it was just... <laughs> So yeah, this is great. So, um, well, first of all, how, how long have you been at this um, workshop? So I've been here for 10 years now. 10 years, right. Um, and I think next year I'll be having a, a nice big 10 year celebration. Great. After COVID, hopefully pass on a bit. Absolutely, yeah. You'll yeah. be very welcome to come and help me celebrate. <laughs> Look forward to that. And then this is great, because this is like a, uh, yeah, it's like a communal space, isn't it, where you can put on events and exhibitions. Yeah, so there's about 20 artists with studios here, or, or we all share um, communal areas. Yeah. And we have areas for printmaking and framing, and then this is a nice gallery space. Yeah. So yeah, very happy to be here, and lovely to be in Central Park. That's right, yeah, we're just off... Um, uh, what's that square? Kingsmead Square? Queen Square. Queen Square, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right, Queen Square, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, it's a bit of a rabbit warren. So, but um, yeah, if you're in Bath, then um, you can hit Michael up on, uh, what is it, Mike, Mike, at Michael Falzoni at, at, on Instagram? Michael Falzoni Art. Michael Falzoni Art. Uh, yes, anytime you want to pop by, uh, I can be here to show you the work. Yeah, brilliant. So yeah, so um, these are obviously really interesting uh, kind of geometric abstractions and yeah, it'd be interesting just to hear a little bit about your background. Uh, so these are um, watercolour on paper. Right. Um, but obviously not a, a very traditional way of using watercolour and I do tend to mix my own paints uh, using pigments and binders and I use a method of layering up with sanding and burnishing and washing in between layers um, because I don't really have a fixed idea when I start the paintings what I want them to look like. They're improvisations, are they? Yeah, so it's very intuitive. I probably start with a grid or a basic algorithmic system of colours and then I go intuitive on top. Um, I just try and puzzle out the shapes and build up the image hopefully to a point where I feel it's, it locks into place and it's working to hold its own space. Yeah, interesting. So, um, just on your background quickly, are, are you, you, you were born around here, were you? Or, um... So I'm from Bournemouth, on oh, the yeah. south coast of England originally. Um, I went to school down in Dorset and did my foundation down in Bournemouth. Yep. And then I came up to Bath to study at the Bath College, which is now Bath Bar University. Uh, took my degree in fine art painting uh, with psychoanalysis as my subsection. Oh, well, interesting. Yeah, and then after graduation, I went over to India to study Indian miniature painting. And I stayed over there for about four and a half, five years. Right. And uh, really enjoyed having a teacher who actually sat with me every day and taught me technique. And um, it was a very meditative time. I was into meditation and painting, and we sat all day doing these really miniature, tiny, tiny, detailed watercolor paintings. Um, so I think I did bring a lot of that back with me. Yeah. Um, even though I was interested in similar type of work when I was at college here before. I think a lot of the watercolour techniques and the idea of um, saturating the surface with the colour and 
every detail and matters and the relationship between the forms and the shapes and the colours, I think he was really influenced by a lot of the Indian miniatures. Yeah. Um, although I love the Western tradition and I love Western abstraction and that whole school of art, right from back in the early days of early abstraction, um, I, yeah, for me the journey, especially the materials, I think, has been influenced by my India trip, yeah. Yeah. And you were talking earlier about um, sort of alchemical elements and... Um... Yeah, especially with the, the more monotone drawings and the ink drawings where I'm doing a lot of circles um, and I'm joining a lot of points together with lines of ink. Right. Um, that really stemmed from my interest in alchemical etchings uh, when I was at college. And uh, permutations and combinations, basic cybernetics of variations of points. Um, yeah, I like etching. I do sometimes do etching, although less now than I used to. But I just love the process of ink. I love paper. I love the materials. Mm. I'm just fascinated by the patterns that are produced, even though I'm only using straight line. So I suppose it's all about relationships. Um, relationships between points, between shapes, distance. Um, yeah. So, so I mean, what is alchemical etching then? Uh, well, might be better off researching that and reading lots of books on it because it's quite a vast. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, to me, it was basically about trying to find something beyond the mundane. Right, yeah. So rather than everyday life, it was about expanding my own consciousness and becoming more aware of what was happening inside myself and outside myself in a way that was less mundane and more spiritual, uh, more open-minded. And I think the alchemists, the alchemists were hiding a lot of their knowledge in, in their works because of persecution and all that stuff at the time. Right. So I think there's quite a lot of hidden knowledge in those yeah. texts and those prints. But something about the imagery always fascinated me. Um, the way it's not easily understood, the almost occult nature of it, it's like symbolic and it's, it's obviously about a whole system of knowledge which isn't obvious. And I've always been fascinated by that. By kind of secrets or hidden knowledge or yeah. the idea that there's actually a lot more going on than we're normally aware of. And I guess that's what all my work's about. It's about trying to capture that essence of something else, something more. Yeah. And so, I mean, you still meditate, I take it, you still... Yes, I still yeah. meditate every day. Yeah. Uh, I find that's an important part of my daily routine. Uh, keep myself in tune, uh, balance, and yeah, it makes me feel good. Feel more connected to, to everything, really, when I meditate. And I suppose that the idea is that people who own one of these pieces, they're going to be kind of imbued with that sense of contemplation and meditation and I think I mean I would recommend everyone tries to own art in their hand have handmade objects in their house because yeah I mean obviously I recommend one of my pieces of work but also other artists work I mean I found having art in my home adds so much more than yes. just the picture you get the whole I mean there's years and years of work behind artists' pictures and, and they imbibe a lot of their searching and their soul searching and their love of life and colour and shape and form and all of that stuff into their work. So as soon as you hang it on the wall in your home, yeah, you're, you're kind of, every day you're, you're getting the energy from, from that particular work. So I would definitely recommend trying to have handmade art in your home if you can. Oh yeah, I, I agree. This you can't beat it. There's something, um, yeah, sort of beyond rational description, isn't there? About I think so, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. I guess with my 
with my work particularly, I am always trying to capture an essence or the energy that is meant to come from the work. Yeah. So that's why I'm so particular about the materials I use. I always try to use very pure pigments and binders and highest quality paper because I just feel that the more elements and pure elements that are used to make the work, it all comes back out in the feeling that you get from it. Yeah. So I'm quite a stickler for, I make all the frames myself, I use traditional method of just making gesso, so it's all very pure chalks and glues and um, so to me that's a very important part of the work because I want the viewer to feel the, the real pure energy coming from the pieces. Yeah, well they're certainly very pure and very intense and uplifting. Um, yeah, um, yeah, really, really lovely show, Michael. Thank you, thank you for coming. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> it's we were delighted. Yeah, when 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 we put up the show, and it just um, yeah, it just all really came together really um, very easily, very quickly, and um, yeah, hopefully everyone will enjoy look at the works on uh, online and um, you can obviously there's quite a lot of works and there's some smaller ones as well um, and you really just need to give each work a bit of time don't you and yeah I mean I do I do feel they are the type of works that you do need to, to spend time with them um, I mean obviously they have an impact an immediate impact well, um, I've enjoyed taking them home and hanging them on my own wall yeah. and, and spending time with them. And even for me, you know, I make them myself, I'm still amazed how over the weeks they, they grow and they change and your relationship with them develops. So, yeah, I do think it, I think time is part of the, one of the main elements of, of the work I do is, is about time. Invest a lot of time into them, but they're also kind of about time in a way, the mysterious nature of time. Yeah, Which yeah. Which time doesn't exist. I was reading the other day, time <laughs> is a, a human construct. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> what that means, but uh, apparently it's all happening at once, and future and past are just illusory. So. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Now, thank you for that. That's a good way to start the day, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, great. Well, thank you for your time, Michael. And, thank you for coming. And, um, yeah. See you soon. Wonderful.